Hello, my name is David Benayim. In this video, I'm going to show you SharePoint versus OneDrive and how Microsoft Teams stores files across each of them. I like to think about OneDrive as kind of a private garden in someone's estate, whereas SharePoint is a public park where everyone can go. SharePoint is within your organization automatically public for everyone. So bringing that back in here, we might see, for example, an open planned office is like SharePoint, whereas OneDrive is someone's own individual office. So if there's files like this that are stored in the open plan office, then anyone from the organization can go and check out this file. But then if something is behind closed doors, then this might be in OneDrive and it only belongs to that organization. And maybe this first office, this is Mr. A's OneDrive. And this second office, this is Mr. B's OneDrive. However, even if you get to Mr. B's OneDrive, he may still invite you in to his office and share his documents. So let's see how that looks. God, I love the more feature inside of PowerPoint. Isn't that nice? The way it just seamlessly goes from one slide to the next. So as I was saying, here we have Mr. B's OneDrive where he has one file, but he's still inviting someone else to share that document. So even though something is by default private, you can still invite another person to share it and work on it with you. And then we get into Microsoft Teams. And Teams, how does that fit into the picture? For the most part, it works with SharePoint, but we'll see how it interacts with OneDrive as well. So your SharePoint might be your entire open plan office, but then you're going to make up different sub teams within that. For example, these three people might be the orange sub team. These might be the purple side team, and these might be the red side team over here. And the documents that the red sub team has is not necessarily the documents that the purple sub team needs to be able to access. So let's look at all of those features in this video. So here I am in Microsoft Teams. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this specific team called training. And I'm going to go to the file section under the general channel. You get a general channel whenever you create a new team and you can create channels underneath the team by clicking here and choosing add channel here. Now in this channel, in the files section, I have these things saved already. And I can work on these files directly in teams by clicking on here and it opens it up and then I get my ribbon here. And I can choose to either edit it directly in this app or I can edit it in the desktop or the browser there. More on that later. For now, I'm going to choose the back button and we're going to see how it looks here. Now, how does this interact with SharePoint? I'm going to click this button that says open in SharePoint and then I'm going to view this side by side. So I'm going to put this on this side and put Teams on the right. So we see them both side by side quite helpfully. As you can see, it's basically exactly the same thing. <laughs> You have the same documents, the same folders, the same animations. This means that it's new. And if I click on create a new folder in SharePoint, we'll see that will come up on Teams. Just if I go away, do that. That's the way to refresh it. Now we can see it's in SharePoint. Equally, I'm going to create a new folder in Teams. And then over here, if I refresh, I can see that that is now showing in Teams. I can also create a new anything, like a new Word document. And then it opens up Word on the web, like this here. And I can start typing here. I'm going to give it a better name. So created for demo, like that and go back here. As you can see, if I refresh, it's in there. And if I go away and come back, I can see it's also in SharePoint. I can even edit it from Teams by clicking there 
And again, like I showed you with PowerPoint, it would open it up here. And open in browser would just give me another browser tab of the same thing there. So as you can see, one is kind of a mirror image of the other one. All of these things are pretty much the same, and I will show you some of these later on. Now, what happens if we delete things? So it's the same if I click delete there. Then here, if I press F5 or refresh, I can see it's not there anymore. And if I delete, for example, the word file, right click and delete, press delete there. It's still in here, but navigate forward and come back and it's gone away. Now it did say I can move it to the recycle bin. So SharePoint does have a recycle bin, which means I can restore it later on. But I won't show you that in this video. We can also do a lot of other things from here. So we can upload a file directly, a file or a folder by dragging and dropping something in there. And we can also share by giving a link that we want to put somewhere else. A few more options here than on the Teams button, but all the main ones are in the Teams button as well. We also have the Sync button, the all important Sync button. This is really nice. This allows you to uh, sync it to your desktop computer. My SharePoint, I'm currently syncing these two folders. I'm not syncing the one called Training. But if I click on this Sync button, it says Getting Ready to Sync. And now we can see that it's popped it up here and it's now syncing. Now, the default with the newer versions of Windows and of OneDrive is this thing. It's really cool. It's called Files on Demand. So it means that none of these are actually living on my device. They're just living locally. However, if I ever want to edit this file, I can double click on it and make some changes. And then if I save it and close it, those changes get saved. And this means that it's now living on my device. I can choose one by one for any one of these. I can choose to open it or I can choose always keep on this device and it will just, that means it's downloading and this means that it's always there. So this files on demand got introduced late last year in both SharePoint and in OneDrive. If you want to go back to how it was without syncing it, there's a couple of ways you can do this. I'm gonna do it from this up here. So I've got my OneDrive Personal and my OneDrive Excel Consulting. I click on there and I can click on More and Settings. And here I want to undo what I just did. So I'm going to stop sync of this general training one like that. And I can choose folders and resync whatever I want or do further aspects there as well. So let's say that I want to create something in SharePoint that's not also in Teams. Now here I am back in SharePoint, but let's say that I want to go backwards. So I'm going to sort of make it full screen to get the navigation menu here. And I'm going to click on the Home tab. And I'm going to create a new and choose something called a document library. And this is going to be kind of like a folder that shows up in SharePoint, but isn't relevant to Teams. Press Create. And now I can just create a ton of files or folders that are on SharePoint, but not on Teams. Everything you do in Teams is mirrored in SharePoint because it just lives in SharePoint. So the inverse is not true. I cannot create something in Teams that doesn't also exist in SharePoint. So over here, if I go back to the web browser, I have something called OneDrive as well. So OneDrive, as I said before, is what's only accessible for me. So not everyone else can access it. Now I can individually share a file from OneDrive, but this is my OneDrive as I see it. So over here, I have these folders. You can see it says shared libraries. These are actually my teams. And so this is linking back to SharePoint. But from here, this is OneDrive and I can new and go a folder or a Word document. And this would just be in OneDrive and not in SharePoint. Now let's see how that looks on Teams. And if I go to where it says files, this is now my OneDrive as well. If I sort both of them in the same way, you see that they're actually the same. 
And again, if I create a new folder, let's call this something that will appear before apps. And then here, if I refresh, yep, you can see it's already come out there as well. And it works the same. If I create something new in OneDrive, it will also show up here. I can also do the sync thing, the same as before. And then I can sync things either by folder or the entire OneDrive library. I normally just do the entire one because it's files on demand anyway. So the files aren't living in my computer. What are some ways to create new files from Teams? Over here, you can either do it from the file section and create a Teams file through there, like we saw earlier. Or you can also upload and do some drag and dropping. But then you can also do stuff in chats. So if you go to a chat, for example, here, and then this is stored in chat, you have this automatic files thing. And this holds all the files that are stored in that chat. So I can click share and create something new. Or I can just put something new like this. And now, if I want to know where this is stored, this is kind of a clever trick. You can click on here and choose Open in Browser. And then it shows me that it's saved in Microsoft Teams chat files. If I click on here, it will open up the OneDrive access for Microsoft Teams chat files. <laughs> Every file that's uploaded in all your chats will go into this folder, Microsoft Teams chat files. So other ways you can upload files, you can go to a chat and click attach, upload from my computer. And let me just choose, for example, this one, PowerPoint file, you can write some comments about it, send it across like that. And now I've shared it like this. So now this is actually stored as well. If I hit F5 here, this is now stored here on my OneDrive as well. There are other ways to add files. You could go to Plus and you can choose a PowerPoint, but it only lets you add the ones that are already on this chat. It doesn't let you add any other ones if you add a tab that way. A little bit differently to how it would work if you go to the Teams and then go here, you can add a PowerPoint file and you can navigate within SharePoint and you can even add something that's not in the same team site. So you can go to another team site like this one, for example, and then add something from there. Again, you can add a file here and choose to Upload from the computer. You have a couple more options within the Teams, which is to browse Teams and channels, exactly like what I just did, or directly from OneDrive. But you can upload from your computer. Again, it will load up. And if I enter, then this is now stored in files. There. You have auto save on the desktop apps, Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. Normally, you would sort of find it up here on the top left, but for me, it's a little bit changed because of how I do my quick access toolbar. So if I switch that on, it asks me where I want to do it. So you have the choice between your personal OneDrive and your business OneDrive. I'm going to go with business OneDrive. Interestingly, it doesn't let you choose SharePoint here. So you turn that on, and now it's saving automatically as I do it. But once you've done that, you get the opportunity to rename this on the fly as you go. like that. And you also can actually navigate where it can be. So here you can choose to put it in a specific folder in OneDrive as well. And you can navigate it that way. It's quite nice. It lets you do this from within the app rather than what it used to be there. All right, cool. So that's it for this quite long video and explanation. I hope you found that useful. And it sort of clears the air on what one means versus the other and how Teams fits into the picture in the OneDrive versus SharePoint debacle. I have a whole load of videos on different computer applications. Most of them are about PowerPoint, Excel, and Power BI. But I'm starting to do these other kind of applications as well. So please subscribe to my channel if you want more great content like this. 
Thanks for watching.